It took me 8 hours of preparation to even start this run. So if you're standing up, you should probably sit down for this one and just enjoy the madness that is about to unfold. Here we go. The Crucible Knight incantations are locked behind the Crucible Knights. Shocking, I know. And as per usual for these runs, we are not allowed to deal damage with anything but the Crucible Knight incantations. So how do we obtain the first spell? Well, first of all, the only Crucible Knight that can be beaten by not dealing damage to him, to my knowledge, is the one in Stormvale Castle. The thing is that we can't really get to Stormvale Castle unless we beat the first major boss from Margit, right? Well, you see, this game is made by From Software, so that means I can do this. Now, that's what's called the zip glitch. It has to be the single most broken glitch to ever exist in any video game ever. The way it works is by overlapping the blocking animation loop with the slow walk command. This is really tricky and it only works on some PCs. Overall, it's still very badly understood, but I was able to replicate it with good success after lowering my graphics and resolution as low as possible, so I could maintain a stable 60 FPS and 16.6 millisecond frame times, both of which are requirements for this glitch to function properly. So we zip from the start of the game immediately to Stormvale Castle and collect the grace there. The path to the Crucible Knight in the castle is a bit hidden. You need to jump over this part of the wall and fall down all the way to the fake platform that crumbles once you land on it. Once you're at the bottom of this place, the Crucible Knight should be just around the corner, eagerly waiting for you. Now there is a neat little way to deal with him. We lure him over to the elevator, and as soon as he steps on it, we activate it, wait for the elevator to rise a bit and immediately roll down to the lower floor. This usually makes him fall down, which is just hilarious if you ask me. Such a mighty foe overcome by the help of gravity and from software elevators. Thanks Miyazaki. With him down, we receive our first main spell. Aspects of the Crucible Horns. Now though we are faced with another conundrum. How do we leave Stoneville? We cannot defeat Margit or Godric yet, as we haven't met Melina and can't level up to use the spell. So what do we do? The zip glitch is gonna come to our rescue once again. We make our way back to the entrance of the Margit arena by first zipping onto this platform that connects to it and then walk to the grace next to the front entrance to Stormvale Castle. Here we want to perform another zip glitch that will teleport us to an invisible platform right next to the left side of the walls of the castle. We do this in a way that when we arrive over there we die to fall damage. Cause luckily, on the other side of the wall, there exists a stake of America that's in range of the platform and hence us as well. Meaning that, by dying on this platform, we can choose to respawn right next to the Stake of America and in this way we can escape Stonewall Castle and finally start the run properly. Melina, you have no idea how happy I am to see your face now. The things I had to do to even get to here. Now give me my beautiful horse. Before we continue, there is still one more teensy tiny little problem that we need to solve. Because we skipped the starting area, we never got the Flask of Cerulean or Crimson Tears. Meaning that we cannot heal or replenish our mana. Thankfully that problem is quite easily solved by going back to the place where we usually wake up after being defeated by the tutorial boss. Here the game kinda gets confused and forces the waking up cutscene anyways, and after the cutscene concludes, we get both of our flasks that we previously skipped. Now with this, all the major preparation problems have officially been solved. I haven't really explained the rules for this challenge run yet, so let's just go over them quickly here. I can only deal damage with Crucible Knight spells, no summoning, no major boss skips. I know we technically skipped Margit already, but don't worry though, I will go back and deal with him legitimately. In fact, let's do that immediately and test this spell out. We're gonna stick my horns up Margit's ass right now. Ah, Stormvale Castle, we're gonna go legitimately now. Let's see how the aspect of the Crucible horns actually do to you. Oh my god, we actually have enough poise to tank this attack. We do a lot of damage though, we don't, I think we don't have enough damage to actually kill him right now. Well, we got the second phase at least. Okay. The aspects of the Crucible are pretty solid. Shoulder checking Margit will never not be funny. But I think we need to grab some more buffs before we start doing some serious damage. We mostly just need flask upgrades for now, which can be easily picked up in the Weeping Peninsula. Here we can also grab the Fate Knot Crystal Tear for our Physics Flask. I also grabbed the first damage boosting talisman in this run, located in Celia Crystal Tunnel, which is the Faithful Chemist talisman that boosts our damage done by incantations by 4%. Not much, but it's a good start. Now let's go back to our boy Margit. Honestly, I'm so used to fighting fire giants, I don't even know how to fight normal bosses anymore. Charging this doesn't actually... actually... Charging this might be better than I thought. Oh, I burned the underneath his attack. Oh, this is cool. I'm dead. We are out of heals officially. Come on, don't move. Yeah, up his butt. Perfect. GG. 
I already gotten through Stormhill, Stormhill, so we don't need to waste my time on that. So we're just gonna go directly into the Rampart Tower and go to the Godric fight. Well, let's see how we are gonna deal with this big boy. This guy, this guy's gonna be a little bit difficult. We might need some more upgrades for this guy though. Or we don't. We can actually stagger him to death. <laughs> Godric is a little bit difficult. Godric is another beast entirely. He's much more tanky than Margit here, so let's upgrade our setup for real this time around. We head over to the academy and on our way we collect two finger talisman to boost our faith staff and grab the teleporter in the purified runes to transmit us to the entrance of the academy. We hop down into the lake and head over to the dragon to grab the key to Rael Lucaria. Now, these spells do mostly physical damage and we don't have too many ways to buff that damage type, but we can still manage to do a decent job at that. We aggravated the abductor at the bottom of the academy, so he teleports us to Volcano Manor. Here we can grab the plus 5 and plus 6 somber smithing stones, which we will use to upgrade our seal that we are also going to grab in this place. The main seal for this run is going to be the Urchery seal. As for a pure faith caster, it is by far the best choice. Funnily enough, this seal doesn't actually boost the damage of the Urchery incantations, unlike the other seals, which doesn't really make sense to me, but oh well. In any case, once we have the talisman, we go on over to our fellow EG and upgrade this bad boy to plus 6, massively increasing our damage output now. Now, back to Godric. Time to ram my horns up Godric's behind. He does that attack, which can be exploited, I think, with this. Oh yeah, definitely. I think I headshot at him right there. Oh my god. The Godric OST. Now, why am you not staggered, Godric? What? You should be staggered by now. Alright, now let's avoid the earthquake here. And uh, let's finish this fight in epic fa- Godric, why are you alive? I want to finish this in epic fashion. Godric, you're making this difficult. Whoop. This is epic fashion, let's go. Bam! Godric down. Shoulder checking my enemies is fun, but it won't satisfy me fully, so let's go collect another incantation. And it's located immediately on Storm Hill in an Ever Jail. Inside the Ever Jail, we will find another Crucible Knight. Who would have thought? During the fight though, I noticed something quite peculiar. The horns actually knock these guys back. And not only that, they also seem to cancel their attack animations. My immense shoulder strength must really be too much for them, I guess. Because of this, the Crucible Knight poses no danger whatsoever, and we easily take him down to grab the aspects of the Crucible tail. With these two incantations in hand, we go back to Stormvale Castle and scale the Divine Tower. The reason is simple. We want to activate Godric's Great Room, as it will give us plus 5 to all stats once equipped. I'm not sure why I haven't used Great Runes in my previous runs, even though I definitely should have done so, but oh well, you learn something new every day I guess. Well, now it's time we head over to the Altus Plateau. We collect both of the Dectus medallions located in Fort Height and Fort Ferrop respectively, and head over to the Dectus Lift. Once we arrive, we go over to the Lux Ruins and demolish the Golem in this place with our immense shoulder strength, and collect the Ritual Sword Talisman, which boosts our damage output by a lofty 10%. Now we have a choice here. We can either take care of General Radan or Renala, but since Renala is the easier of the two, we go and take care of her first and we leave the General for later. Red Wolf of Radagon, let's go. At least you do a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, we do a lot, a lot of damage. The problem is he also does a lot, a lot of damage. I hate this fight sometimes. If you have slow spells, this fight is an absolute hell. Stay where you are. Yeah! <laughs> Clutch victory, guys. Clutch victory. Oh my god. That was way too close for my liking. Are you gonna use the incantation to hit the singing kids? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna do use the incantations for exactly that purpose. Hopefully we're gonna have enough damage. That's the only problem that I'm a little bit afraid of. Hit. Perfect. We have enough damage, definitely. Now we're gonna send her flying. Renala Space Program incoming, boys. Renala Space Program. Renala sp Space Program. And she immediately jumped over my attack. She's like the most unassuming boss fight. Send her flying. Heal. This should be GG. Bam! Good fight. Alright. With two shards of the Elden Ring in our pocket, we might want to pick up some more upgrades to our setup. The first one on the list is going to be Godifroy, who is locked up in an Everjail on the Altos Plateau. Now, his moveset is just the same as Godric, but his health bar resembles more the Fire Giant with how tanky he actually is. The fight itself though revolves around just baiting his most dangerous attacks and punishing them accordingly. Not gonna lie, he took a couple of tries to take down, but eventually he does, giving us Godfrey's icon, which boosts the damage of charged spells by 15%. 
this is going to be our main damage boosting talisman of this build, as charging these spells is necessary to use them effectively. Now here at Altus, we also collect the incantation Golden Vow, which boosts our damage and defense by quite a lot. Then we backtrack to Kaelid to collect Flame Grant Me Strength, which boosts physical damage by a whopping 20%. Now we are getting into a territory where our damage starts to rise exponentially. In Kaelid we can also complete Gauri's questline, doing that will give us another great talisman, but first we need to take down Commander O'Neill in the swamp. We sneak behind him, buff ourselves to the absolute maximum and start a shoulder checking routine on his ass. We don't quite manage to take him down immediately, so we finish him off by luring him all the way out into the swamp and let the Ohio geysers do the dirty work for us. He gives us the needle, which we can take back to Gauri, so we can heal Millicent in the church above. Now, cause we only need a talisman from Gauri, an easy way to get it early is to shoulder check Millicent into submission and then give Gauri the same treatment afterwards. That way we immediately get what we want, Flox Canvas Talisman, an upgrade to the previous canvas talisman we picked up. I've just realized, all my challenge runs involve obliterating innocent maidens. Anyways, let's go to the capital. We slap his face, we knock him, oh my god, what? What? You're supposed to go like into a stampede, what? The, the, the fully charged horns are tricking off way. Not gonna lie, that's quite funny. <laughs> it staggers his attack, oh my god. Like, look at it, it stopped this fireball attack. It's insane. My god, that's actually poggers. He's breaking my frame rate, but I'm breaking his spine. Come on, do the attack. I throw backwards and GG. Bye bye. The poise you get from these spells is insanity. Time to figure out, though. That's a lot of damage, though. I was expecting that damage. Not going to lie to you. Okay, we can hit him here. Bam! Okay, he hits me, I'm dead. I hit him, he's dead. Just go for it! <laughs> <laughs> good pie, good <Godfrey. laughs> Uh, more faith, please. Let's try a tail, guys. Morgoth, give me your, give me your knife attack. There we go. You have your tail, and I have mine. <gasps> Bro, this is actually amazing. The only problem is we have only one opening, so. And in the second phase, I'm not sure what you're gonna do with the second phase. Oh, not, not a Spinneruni attack. His attacks are deceptively long-ranged. That's the wall. Oh my god, that's so stupid. I'm dead, I'm dead. Get horned! Oh my god! <laughs> the spell was too slow. Morgoth, my boy, calm down. Okay, you're dead. There's no way to surviving this time. He may still kill me, he's Morgoth after all. And he's dead. <laughs> Good fight. With the Omen King down, we are now granted access to the mountaintops of the Giants, where the real challenges are about to unfold in front of us. Before we hop on over there though, we need to take care of our fashion, cause it sucks right now. But we can fix that easily. We head over to Auriza's Hero's Tomb, here we need to avoid the chariots at all costs and just run for our lives. I really hate these things. Thankfully the boss room that we seek isn't too far into the dungeon, but the boss we are about to face isn't gonna do us any favors either. Bro, these spells are broken. <laughs> I swear to god these spells are not weak at all. Alright, this, this one is going second phase. Oh, Jesus, you can actually... The, oh, the pillars are actually not here to help me. You have your Crucible incantations? And I have mine. <laughs> Bonk. Bonk, one down. I'm pretty sure we can just trade with him and he should be able to like... Yeah, we're gonna just push him away. I think he's a little bit weaker as well. GG or Dovis. Good fight. Defeating one of the most annoying boss battles in the game awards us with something quite nice. The Crucible Knight Armor. Besides just looking goddamn cool, each piece of the set gives a 4% damage increase to aspects of the Crucible incantations, for a total of 17% damage increase to the incantations since the buff stacks multiplicatively. Now that's a hell of a damage increase, pair that with the fact that we are now an incantation casting tank and we have a hell of a build in front of us. 
Now we are set. So let's head over to the mountain tops. On our way up to the mountain tops, we pick up the plus 7 and plus 8 somber smithing stones, which are neatly located along the path to the top. The rest we just kinda run past and head straight to the fire giant. Now, fighting the fire giant with a plus 8 seal is not the easiest thing in the world. Thankfully for the first phase, the tail incantation manages to do the job really well, and it even manages to stagger him quite easily. Second phase fire giant is another matter entirely though. We just don't do nearly enough damage to him right now, so we run out of cerulean flasks and have to accept our defeat. Let us put the fire giant in our back pocket for now, and let's take care of some of the other demigods first. Radar incoming boys, let's go Radar. Shoulder check Radar, oh my god. The poor, Le poor Lennart doesn't have a good, it's not going to have a good day today. I'm actually surprised we haven't poised broken at all. Bye bye Radar. Good fight. If only the fire giant was as easy as Radan. Now, an easy solution to our lack of damage is to upgrade the seal. So we go and complete Varys questline so we can get access to the Mogwin Palace. Once we are at the Mogwin Palace, we can collect the plus 9 and plus 10 somber smithing stones respectively, and with those in hand, we upgrade our seal to the maximum. Before I go and beat the crap out of the fire giant, there is still one more spell I want to try to get. Keyword here being try. The last crucible incantation is locked behind Praetor Rykard and with him being a gimmick boss that you usually defeat with a special weapon, doesn't give me too much hope that we're gonna be able to get the last incantation. Okay, I've seen all that I need to see. Get staggered! Oh my god! These spells stagger nobody. Bye bye! Good fight. Yeah, lava's going to be definitely a problem. Oh man, the damage is pretty good. Bro, I think Raikar has more HP, so this doesn't seem doable right now, but it might be doable later on. At least you're gonna defeat the God Devouring Serpent. Right now, absolutely no chance in hell. How much damage do we actually do to Raikar? That is the question right now. Oh yeah, this is definitely impossible, guys. <laughs> well, it was a good attempt. It was a good attempt. I can safely say that Rykard, for all intents and purposes, is impossible to defeat with these incantations. But hey, at least I tried. But now it's time to go back to the fire giant. The tail is definitely a better spell for this guy though, which is pretty nice. It's pretty neat. And there we go, finally. Perfect stagger actually. Bro. Yeah, the horns are going to be second phase, definitely. Damaging, I think. How do we hit his hand, though? I think we're gonna have to free him here. Haha! <laughs> Fire giant, go away! Just, just go away, thank you. That was an infuriating boss fight. With the fire giant felled, we are left with the following bosses in this order. Forskin Duo, Maleket, Gideon, Godfrey, Mo, Placidusax and Radabeast. I'm mostly worried about Placidusax and Godfrey, as they seem like they will be a bit of a problem to defeat with these spells. I mean, that's pretty good damage. <laughs> if you figure out a good strategy for them, this is going to be easy as cake. Well, one down. I'm breaking the game way too often, guys. Okay, what is go- what is going on? One hit. BAM! Honestly, starting this run, I have never thought these incantations would be easy to do. Oh yeah, baby. Malikov on the pack. You asshole. Okay. Yeah, I knew it. I knew that would stagger. I knew it. You should get staggered here. <laughs> get tailed, Malika. My tail is better than yours, man. Gideon, my boy, you don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know. You don't know what you're dealing with here. Like I told you, it's going to be a short-lived fight. Into space we go, Gideon. Good fight. 
Now that Gideon has been sent into space, let's see how Godfrey is actually going to do. I think Godfrey is actually going to put a valiant effort. <laughs> okay. Can I show the check? Oh, I can. Well, that's why grappling wins, boys. That's why grappling is actually OP. This guy is insane. Miyazaki is again at it, sabotaging everything. Should that have been a side attack? I won't question it. I'm questioning his resilience, though. There we go. That's a good second phase entrance, though. Oh, nice. Get kicked in the face, naturally. Now we wait for his lunge attack. Goodbye, Godfrey. I would not advise having an MMA match with the first Ellen Lord. It's not really a good idea. This guy would give Karelian a run for his money, if you know what I'm talking about. In any case, before we go and beat up Rather Beast, let's take care of some of the optional bosses first. How shall we deal with you? I think actually buffing and then shackling is the way to go here. Oh my god. I'm so confused why we're not able to actually, like... Why is your poise not being broken, man? What the hell? Please come to me, Mo, please. I see it as clear as day. And that is the Lord of Blood, boys. Alright, Placid Dusex. Maybe he's going to cooperate this time. I'm dead. <laughs> This fight was actually very easy for me on the first playthrough. But after the first playthrough, it never was easy again. Nice, we finally broke somebody's poise, boys. It took me hundreds of years to actually break somebody's poise, but we did it. We finally did it. Ah, oh, the f goddamn tail. Oh, no, I'm dead. I said we don't need to mess it up, Toto, what the fuck? The clutch is incoming. I hate that attack. That attack is her piece itself. Good fight, Dragon Lord. Oh my god, I was so close. Bro, this fight is insanely tense. Insanely tense. Jesus. Ooh. I don't know what's up with these Ellen Lords being so tough in this challenge run. Both Placidusax and Horalu have given me a run for my money today. But with all of these annoyances down, it's finally time to challenge the final boss and give him a proper shoulder checking routine. Because Radagon is kind of passive at the beginning and we can actually do this. You're gonna eat a hit. I don't mind eating hits if we can damage Radagon a lot. I'm gonna trade with you Radagon because I don't actually fear you that much. Yeah, that's why the tail against him is not going to work at all. I don't know how I forgot to fight him, but I did. What the hell was that? Why did he turn around? What is going on today? I can actually do it this stack here. <laughs> I couldn't take advantage of it, but we did break him out of it. And we missed. <laughs> he all, he's also confused as well as I am. Actually, I should have used that before. Yeah. Three thousand damage, boys. Three thousand. It's a lot of damage. If the LMB cooperates, he's gonna die. The Elden Beast is actually cooperating, boys. What is going on today? The tail attack, boys, is actually kind of cool. Do a melee attack. That's not a melee attack. That's a quasi melee attack. GG! Good fight, Elden Beast! GG, boys. Crucible incantation run done. Like and subscribe if you enjoy these stupid videos of mine. And if you think these videos have too much cutout, go and check out my VOD channel. Link is in the description. Until next time, guys.